Hello, welcome to Healthy You. I'm your host, Jay. I am delighted to welcome our guest, Chef Green. Chef Green is a vegan, vegetarian, and raw food chef who scientifically and creatively finds the balance of nutrition and flavor to make unique dishes for people like you and me. In addition to promoting great health through lifestyle changes, Chef Green apprenticed with world-renowned Dr. Aris Latham, where she earned her raw food chef certification and interned with Chef Kepra, where she enhanced her raw food talent and skills. And if that wasn't enough, Chef Green is the CEO of Chef Green Life LLC, which offers a variety of services to include learning, the power of cleansing, and detox. Please join me in welcoming Chef Green. Chef Green, how are you today? I'm well, and yourself? I am fabulous. I'm really excited to have you here because we already know and love you. You've been on this show before, yes. but I'm super excited, A, to be working with you, and B, to see what you're going to do for us today. So for our viewers who are not familiar with a vegan, vegetarian, excuse me, vegetarian and raw food chef, can you tell us a little more about what that means and what it entails? Um, so I cater to um, people who are transitioning, like starting out to be a vegetarian, which means that they still have a little bit of dairy in their life, like cheese and uh, dairy milks. I love and cheese. then I also cater to the my clients who are fully vegan, who don't want anything to have with uh, animal products. Wow. And then we do all the raw stuff where people who might have diabetes or any type of health issue, and they just want to focus on raw foods and make that their sole medicine. Because you know the food is the medicine oh, initially. Oh, absolutely. So yeah, so I cater to all three people. That's exciting. Yeah. Now, why do you believe in a plant-based lifestyle? Like, what is it that? Why is this it for you, and why do you promote it to other people? Well, I believe the food is your medicine, mm -hmm. um, and I feel like that's the first thing that we should go to. And I feel like preventing any type of disease is the best way. So a lot of the herbs and spices that come from indigenous cultures, they have been healing people for years, for centuries. So I just want to get back to the basics sure. of using fresh foods, not heavily processed foods. We don't even, I don't even use like fake meats like tempeh and tofu and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I just strictly stay with the plant-based uh, lifestyle because I feel like that works, especially okay. when you're trying to prevent any type of uh, disease. No, and I think one key word that you said was prevent. A lot of uh, like the medicines that you received and it's already when you are diagnosed with something and it's kind of like it's a reactive approach to try to cure whatever it is that you have versus taking a proactive approach which is to just live this healthy lifestyle. So exactly. kudos to you for <laughs> knowing how to make delicious food, right? I mean, I'm not a chef, but thank you for being here. No problem. So thank you. what are you going to make for us today? We're going to make a vegan quiche. Uh, like I said, a lot of people love eggs, and it's like the hard thing. Eggs and cheese is like the hardest thing to get. To get people, out of your system. Yeah. yeah. So the vegan quiche, basically, we're going to have that cheesy filling with the nutritional yeast, the cashews, the egg is going to be from the uh, gabonzo beans, so we're wow. going to have that flavor. Uh, so it's a good way to start your, your day with a breakfast. You know? So what inspired you to do this recipe? Is there something specific or is it just one of your favorites? I've done a vegan brunch in D.C. and... Um, I was just like, how am I going to approach this? And I know like a lot of people like the tofu eggs. So I just basically wanted to try something where it didn't have anything to do with tofu or any type of soy. Right. So then that's when I came up with this um, recipe. Exciting. So let's go over a little bit of what we have here. So the crust is going to be the potatoes. And yes. that's two clean organic potatoes sliced yes. into the small one millimeter slices, which... Actually, you can make like potato chips out of exactly. this, right? So now we're getting ready to go ahead and create the crust, right? Exactly. We're going to put these little yummy, delicious looking potato chips. Yes. What I call potato chips. Come on, girl, you potato. can get in here. Let me get in here. Our hands are clean, people, so make sure you wash your hands. <laughs> Sanitation is paramount. 
So what is the point of creating this crust with potatoes? Is there anything else that you can use as a substitute? Yeah, you can use, you can make your own crust with, you know, making traditional crust like with flour. Okay. But I just wanted to be a little creative and try something different. You know, I like hash browns in the morning. So oh, it's like we could too. have like a nice golden uh, potato crust. That's true. Have you tried this recipe before? I tried it, yes, I have. Yes. With and like different, I said, different we, items or? Yes. Okay. You can get creative with it. Like whatever you, what you like is a filling. Nice. So or for crust, like you can use the filio uh, dough as well. Okay. So we've set the oven to 375, but yes. typically you do it for 350 and how long? You do it for about 10 to 15 minutes. So this is how your, cr whoops, your crust <laughs> will look. And then we're going to put it in the stove real okay. quick. And what are you looking for when those potatoes so are So we just wanted to get a little soft. Okay. So once we put the filling on it, it can cook evenly. Okay. So now we're going to start with the filling. Well, let's go over what type of ingredients we have here. Okay. Um, if that's okay, chef. Absolutely. Okay. So we did the potatoes. Now we have the nutritional have, yeast. Yes, we have the gobanzo bean, which is going to make uh, the quiche taste like an um, egg. Okay. So we're going to use the gobanzo bean flour, the nutritional okay. yeast for the cheese. We have a little bit of lemon juice All right. and some uh, red peppers and jalapeno, some oats and some kale and some soaked cashews. Okay. We're going to saute these mushrooms and some truffle oil to give it that nice, you know, savory taste. Right. And, and um, you also have some, is that soy milk? This coconut? is almond milk right here. Almond milk. Yes. Okay. And instead of kale, you can also use spinach. Yes, is that you can. Right? Uh, actually, that's on the recipe. Yes, you can use spinach, but we're going to use kale today. Okay. And it's just as exciting, just as good. Exactly. Okay. And we're going to have some uh, garlic too, some fresh garlic. These are four bulbs of garlic. I like garlic. I hope you don't mind. I do not mind. Okay. Is it going to make my breath smell? That potent? doesn't matter because I like you. So we're good. We're good. We're good. Okay. We're good. We're going to both have garlic breath. All right. Well, <laughs> that's exciting news. So just stick around while our crust is in the oven and we'll be right back. See you soon. Welcome back. Again, we are here with Chef Green. And now, Chef, we are going to take all of our ingredients and blend them together. Now, this looks like a very high tech thing that you're using here. Yes, yeah, so this right here is a Cuisinart um, food processor. Wow. So it's going to help us break all this, these ingredients down into a liquid form so it'll be easier for us to use. Remember, we're going to saute this. We're sauteing this, so I'll yes. take it out of the way. So first we're going to put in our gobanzo flour. Now, is there a method to putting them in a certain way? Like, is this the best way? Um, put in the dry first. No, like there's that. no method. Okay. At least not for me. Oh, I'll good. Just go with it. <laughs> okay, we're just gonna go with it. You heard it here first. All right. So now we have the oats. The oats. Um. You. What else? And then we're gonna put the lemon juice in there. Okay. Now, what is the purpose of the lemon juice? Is the lemon juice? What does it do? It's just going to add that nice um, tangy flavor. It's going to be like a zingy. With okay. The, um, but with it's all the not like overpowering no, where you no, taste no. some. Okay. And is there alternative to lemon juice if somebody's allergic to citrus? Um, they cannot put it in there. You don't okay. have to have it in there. Okay. It's just to add to the flavor. Well, that's good You're to You're not know. even going to taste it. So now we're going to put the almond milk in there. Which I love almond milk. You can also use soy. And make sure it's not sweetened because you don't want no vanilla flavor. And I've done that a lot of times <laughs> and I learned my lesson. Please don't get vanilla for these type of recipes. So we're going to start it right now. Just we're, we're looking for a nice smooth consistency. Okay. Wow. So I'm going to add um, some of the kale in there so we can have some that's like chopped up inside of the, uh, the mixture. So you just add them a little bit of, at a time. It's not like all at once. No. Because I want to put some in on top of the crust. To garnish yeah, it? To, oh. 
That's exciting. So we're gonna just put a little bit and then we're gonna post it. Okay. Post it. And then we don't want the quiche to be green because if we just blend it ah, all together. Ah, that makes total sense. So you don't want the kale to be in like liquid form. Well, exactly. that was fast. Yeah, that's a nice smooth consistency for us. Is that is that all for you? Is there a way for us to show the viewers what this looks like? Sure. Let's see. Can we undo this? Yes. I feel like I'm going to press the button that says on and it's going everywhere. That looks great. Oops. That looks exactly. really good. And it smells delicious, actually. Yeah. Okay, so now is the time for us to saute some onions. Now, for those of us... We're sauteing some mushrooms. Oh, mushrooms. And I said onions. That's <laughs> what I was really thinking about. But thank you for correcting me. You're welcome. So we're going to take... Um, let this get a little hot. Okay. And we have some coconut oil that we're going to put in here. Okay. Is this your preference or it just tastes good or? Well, coconut oil is better to, um, it, it tolerates high heat. It cooks better with high heat. Oh, that's smart. Better than um, other things. Olive oil or any other oils. That's exciting. I didn't know that, by the way. So you learn something new every day. Every day, especially today. So we're just gonna wait for this uh, coconut oil to like spread throughout. Now, I know coconut oil is good for your skin and for some people put it in their hair. Excellent so, for the hair, especially natural hair. So and for this specifically, does it have that very robust taste of coconut? No, some people say they can taste the coconut oil, but you know, I don't. I just like, the, I just like to use this better than any other heat. I mean, than any other oil on hot, heat. Right. hot heat. Exactly, got it, okay. So now we're gonna put the mushrooms in there. And I got a little bit of truffle salt. Okay. Just a little bit, it's a little bit too much. And wait for this to simmer up and then we're gonna use that and put it into, inside of uh, our filling. Okay, so we're gonna turn up the heat here. And y'all gonna watch me burn the house down. Just kidding. So how long do you usually leave the mushrooms on here for? Just let them get simmered. I thought the pan was a lot hotter than what it is. You hear the simmer now? Yes. Because they're going to cook. Put it on high. They're going to cook inside with the Right, the they're oven. going to bake, so you don't really have to do like this huge thing to it. It's not going to. So we've started sauteing the mushrooms, and we've added the rest of the kale. Now, what is, what is the point of sauteing the kale? So we just wanted to make it a little soft, so once we put it with the mixture, um, it'll eat, it will cook evenly. Okay. So um, we didn't need to saute it, but I wanted to get the flavor of the mushrooms and the truffle salt. Oh, nice. So, um, you know, the quiche is going to be delicious, uh, just to add more yeah. flavor. And but you like that, delicious. right? You yeah. see that nice, vibrant green? So it we didn't actually beautiful. kill the kale. It still looks nice and vibrant <laughs> and bright. And we got the mushrooms, nice, nice color. So now we're going to take the crust out. Yes, we are. I have my handy dandy glove. Safety first, people. Okay, I'm going to put this here. So we're going to just add um, the filling. We're going to use that. This thing. Yep. And it smells really, really good. So is there a way if somebody, for somebody to know, okay, I messed this up. Let me. You're just gonna. Yeah. Is there a way for what? Somebody to know if they're like, oh, this, this, it's not coming out the way it looked on camera. What would be the, the sign? You just wanna have a nice smooth consistency. And um, right now, because we add the kill and we uh, try to we tried to, um, I forgot the, the mustard. Okay. <laughs> so now we had to basically um, pulse it a little bit more and have the, the kale make it a little look rough and stuff. So you just want to have a nice, it's almost like pancake batter. Right. 
nice and smooth. Except you can dip your finger in it and eat it right now. Well, it does taste good, but you know, still flour. <laughs> so you want to make sure that cooks. Right. So this is all going on top. Exactly. That's okay. Now it's coming all together. And it looks really, really nice. Is there anything else that we need to add to this before we put it on top? Nope. Okay. Let me buy all this. Oh, this is so exciting. I wish you all were here with us to smell this delicious meal. I would be one of those people that would just nitpick and eat the crumbs off the top. So we're just gonna make sure it's evenly spread. Try to poke some of that stuff in there. It's a nice color. It is. And then for color, we're gonna add the jalapenos, the red peppers. Very nice. So once we put this in the oven, how long should it be in there? For about 30 minutes. Okay. I just wanna try to stuff as much in there as possible. So this is like a very quick and easy meal that can feed. How, how many people do you think something like this can feed? It depends. If it's guys, probably two. <laughs> but, you know, it'll probably give you a nice, good six or seven slices. So this could be like a nice side. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, Perfect. I eat it by itself or with a nice salad. Well, that makes sense. So That's very true. You know, it all depends on your appetite. But I like to use all the colors when I'm eating. Like, I like to eat the rainbow. You know, like, they have Skittles to eat the rainbow. Absolutely. But in this situation, when I'm making food, I like to um, basically um, try to get all the colors, especially with, like, the red peppers, the kale, this. the green. All these things are nice and vibrant, and they have a lot of vitamins and minerals in there to help us stay healthy. So this is our before picture. It looks really, really nice. I can't wait for the finished product. Madam, if you wouldn't mind doing the honors. Of course. Thank you. So while we let that bake, we're actually going to take a small break. Um, and I believe this is our time for a public service announcement. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. For years, scientists have explored remote corners of the Earth, searching for exotic substances that might help prevent cancer. At last, man has discovered a secret place where powerful remedies can actually be found. Medical research shows that a vegetarian diet rich in fruits, vegetables and whole grains can help prevent many types of cancer. Wherever you live, cancer prevention is as close as your grocery store. To learn more, call 866-906-WELL. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you enjoyed our public service announcement. We are here with Chef Green. We have cleaned up our kitchen, and now we are ready to try this delicious quiche. But before we do, I have a quick question. Do you teach people how to make this? Is this a service that you provide, teaching people how to cook their own meals? Yes, I do private uh, lessons. I go to people's homes, or they come to my kitchen, and I show them how to make vegan raw food or vegetarian food. Oh, that is so exciting yes now can we try this and on top of making this delicious quiche she has also created a very simple and quickly made salad, salad. so what ingredients did you use here so we basically used what we had left over from the quiche so i used some uh some kale some red peppers some jalapenos a little truffle oil and some truffle salt and mm -hmm. then we could top that with a little bit of nutritional yeast if you like uh, just to go along with the quiche Okay, so let's try this quiche because it smells delicious and we really let this thing bake. I can't wait. And then we got the chips that are like nice and crispy. On the side, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And while we're doing this, how can people get in touch with you if they wanna follow you, if they wanna reach out or hire you to do something for them, where can they go? Um, well, I'm on social media like um, Chef Green's Wellness for Instagram, uh, Chef Green Life on Facebook, and I'm also available 
through the Wellness House on Instagram as well. And my email is chefgreenlife at gmail.com. So shoot me an email, book an appointment, do a consultation. Very simple. She does it all. So there's no reason not to get in contact with this phenomenal chef. And I service the whole DMV. Wow, that's good to know. That is very good to know. And you also work with children. I know yesterday you were in Baltimore doing some work with children there. Yeah, so I just did a nice demonstration for the sorority uh, mega, I don't want to jack their names. Okay. <laughs> but it was a, it was a sorority uh, that I basically did a nice healthy demonstration for the students, let them know how to have um, alternative uh, natural vegan food. So I, I show them how to make hummus from scratch, show them how to make a nice uh, green smoothie. And a lot of kids, you know, at first they're like, oh my God, it, tastes, sure. uh, it might taste nasty because it's too green. And then when they taste it, they're like, oh my God, this is great. So <laughs> I love that. I That's love that. great. So you changed their perspective. Exactly. So I have my little fork so here. Let's get some salad. Okay. Do you want some on the plate? It's up to you, chef. I'm leaving it all up to you. All the pressure is on you. It's on you because you got to eat it. <laughs> so this is the moment of truth. I'm going to try this delicious piece. Wait, I don't know if it's delicious yet, so hold on. Let me try <laughs> it first. You know it's delicious. Stop playing. It is very good. And let me tell you why. It has a lot of substance. So like you said, it's not just... A, a side dish it can also be used as a main meal and I think the the salad complements it amazingly so thank you for that addition it is really delicious I hope you get a chance to try it at home now chef green I know you have a YouTube channel that you wanted to tell us about and where can people find that YouTube channel what is it called it's a uh, chef green life on YouTube um, make sure you subscribe like and learn and share everybody <laughs> so now you have chef green's contact info i really really appreciate you all staying with us she was awesome thank you so much for coming by thanks jay for having me absolutely and we will continue to do so as we have before so thank you for joining us today be sure to find our healthy utv show page on facebook or go to our website at healthyutvshow.com and remember a plant-based diet is a fantastic foundation for a happy healthier you i'll see you next absolutely. time absolutely have a great day and now we can enjoy the rest of our meal